My name is Commissioner Frank Avila. I'm a commissioner at the Metropolitan Water Reclamation District of Greater Chicago. And today we're going to talk about the Metropolitan Water Reclamation District of Greater Chicago. And I have with me Brian Berkovich. He's the executive director at the Water Rec. And I have Catherine O'Connor. She's the director of engineering. Thanks for being on the show. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. You know, uh, uh, very few people know what we do at the Metropolitan Water Reclamation District of Greater Chicago's long name because they think we're the water filtration plant at the city of Chicago. <laughs> so we're going to try and explain to them what we do and, and, and why we like doing it at there. Mm -hmm. And so when you were starting out in life, what did you wish you had known when you started out? Brian? So I'll, I'll begin. I think uh, one of the things that... Uh, makes the world um, operate and function properly is communication. So when I was in engineering school, um, they didn't teach a lot of communications <laughs> classes. And now as I've gotten older and realized that's yeah. probably the most important thing you can really have in any business that's successful. Well, yes, you're right because you're the executive director. So when something happens, they go, we said, no, you go talk to Brian. <laughs> <laughs> so see our executive a lot of discussion, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and how about you, Catherine? Uh, I recently heard a quotation that said, says something like, and I don't know who to tr attribute it to, that when things are happy and moving well, moving along well, be light. And when things get difficult and hard, be lighter. Oh, uh, lighter. Mm -hmm. I wish that had always been my perspective and I had known that, that that helps every time. That helps problem solving. It helps making things move efficiently. I think that's, I wish that had been my perspective earlier in my career. Sure, because you know, we're all civil engineers. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Brian, what school did you go to? I went to the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. And you, Catherine? I graduated from State University of New York at Buffalo. But, and uh, IIT, did you go to? And then I, I received yeah. my master's yeah. and doctorate yeah. at uh, Illinois Institute of Technology. Yes, and, and, and I went down to University of Illinois down in Champaign mm -hmm. also. Mm -hmm. So we're all civil engineers, and very few people know that civil engineers have saved the majority of the people and their health. And, and, and the reason for that is because we, what, we build wastewater plants, mm -hmm. uh, sewers, uh, purify water. So in our profession, of all the other professions, we have saved most of the people in the world. Mm -hmm. what, do, what do you think of that idea, Catherine? I think uh, that's absolutely true. <laughs> I think sanitation, safe roads, has been what has allowed us to live well in these urban areas and it makes life more much more efficient in concentrated urban areas we couldn't live in chicago if we didn't clean the water as well as we yeah. do yeah so uh, you know brian and Catherine, why did you want to become an engineer <laughs> so i'll, I'll begin yeah. so i uh it was funny i always always like let's well, get to where i am now right yeah. so i always like structures and buildings and yeah. bridges yeah so I was going through high school and then I got to like stadiums. Yeah. Right? So I was like, oh man, when at the time I was going through schools and they started building football stadiums yeah. and baseball stadiums, yeah. right? So I'm like, oh, I'll go into architecture, engineering. So I kind of gravitated towards that in college. Yeah. And uh, as the market cycles with jobs, right? That was great when I started and by the time I graduated, <laughs> it wasn't quite so good. <laughs> yeah. So I had to do kind of a career shift yeah. and I ended up going towards the environmental engineering side. And environmental engineering, since. yes, mm -hmm. yes. And how about you, Catherine? I decided to be an engineer when we had a, the school called it a mini semester, a mini semester, and a woman came in and she was an engineer yeah. and that was very novel at the time. Yeah. And she did crash, chest, crash car crash testing. Oh. And she explained that engineers yeah. solve problems yeah. and from that day I wanted to be an engineer. Now what grade was that? That was my sophomore year in high school. So, and, and that's why uh, I think the STEM Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, project is very good because STEM stands for what? Science, technology, engineering, and math. Mm -hmm. But now they're changing it now. Yes. The STEAM, <laughs> <laughs> which is good. Add a yes, it is yes. good. <laughs> right? Yes. They're adding art. Art. Yes. They're adding art there. And, and you know, I want to become an engineer because my father bought a, a lot in Stickney. Okay. And uh, he didn't have any money, so we, we dug out the foundation. <laughs> And, 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 and that's when, I, when he started building the house, I said, I'd like to become an engineer. So, so that's how I, I want to become a civil engineer. So kind of engineer on the fly, right? Yes. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and that's, that's why um, uh, 
working for the Metropolitan Water Reclamation District of Greater Chicago. We have uh, 2,000 employees, uh, about 1,000 are trained, mm -hmm. and 1,000 are professionals. Uh, and and uh, we have a lot of different type of engineers, right? Mm -hmm. Because at the Water Rec, we need a lot of different type of engineers. Now, now, Brian, why do you think at the Water Rec, we need a lot of different engineers? Well, there's a lot of different processes we have at the plants that require a lot of the disciplines. We yes. have mechanical engineers, we have electrical engineers, we have civil engineers, we can use chemical engineers. And what's kind of evolved over our careers is the need for process control engineers. Yes. Because the plants themselves are becoming more automated, a lot more systems that run a, that are based around computer technology. So the process control engineers are the ones that kind of can program them, make sure they're uh, functioning properly, and make sure everything's talking uh, the way it should. Sure, because at, at the Water Rec, uh, uh, our mission, uh, Kath, what, what is our mission at, at the Water Reclamation District? Our mission is to protect Lake Michigan, keep maintain water quality in Lake Michigan, yes. protect the water quality in our area rivers and streams, yes. and alleviate flooding. And alleviate flooding, right? And, and uh, you know, when Catherine mentioned that we have to protect the quality of the water, we have, uh, uh, our plants are called wastewater plants, wastewater treatment plants, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Right? And, and we all eat and drink, right? We all eat and drink, and, and we all, after we eat and drink, what do we do? And what do we do? We'll go and poop and pee. We're the number one and number two agency in the world. We flush the toilet, and when you flush it, out of sight, out of mind. No one ever thinks of where your human waste goes to. Mm -hmm. Yes. It goes to the wastewater plants along with what you do during the day. You get up in the morning, you take a shower, you brush your teeth, uh, you eat. Uh, anything you do that deals with water that goes down into the system goes into a control system. And that goes into our wastewater plant. Mm -hmm. And then it's, it's treated. And, 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 and that's why uh, if we didn't have wastewater plants, and microbes, right? Yes. We will have, what, a lot of poop in Cook County? <laughs> yes, we would. Yes. yes it's a lot of problems. But, yeah. but that's what we do. We treat human waste and everything else that goes into the system. Mm -hmm. yeah. And create a very high quality fertilizer. Right. And, 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 and what does that, how does that help the health and welfare of the people, Catherine, here in Cook County? It dramatically reduced disease, the spread of disease, when mm. the plants were built. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. And in the 1850s, there wasn't a clear understanding if people were getting sick from water or from foul air. Yes. And it wasn't until the turn of the century that they understood it is definitely spread by water. They yes. finally realized in Chicago that the people that worked on the bridges and smelled the foul air, air from the uh, river, that yes. they seemed to stay healthy, and then they focused on water. Yes. So prior to chlorination, Many people in the world, in the cities, died of terrible yeah. deaths. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you know, Brian, uh, very few people know that uh, back in the late 1800s, that all the waste from the stockyards went into Bubbly Creek, mm -hmm. into the Chicago River. At that time, the river went up to about uh, 31st Street, 33rd Street. That was the Chicago River, mm -hmm. and all that waste went into the river, went into Lake Michigan, and the intake cribs were near the shore. And then the drinking water for the people was uh, where the intake cribs were, was coming in and drinking their own waste. Mm -hmm. And they were getting sick. So, so what did the district do, Brian? So just at that time, they realized they had a problem on their hands, yes. right? So the state legislature created the uh, Illinois Sanitary District Act, I believe, uh, that created the Metropolitan Water Reclamation District. And by that act, we were able to enact a bond sale, and eventually the connect or construction of the canal system. We, we, we reversed the river. We reversed the yes. river. And mm -hmm. everything flows down, and we have a lock at Lockport, mm -hmm. and we have uh, the uh, Chicago Center Ship Canal, mm -hmm. and we have, what, the uh, Calumet? Kelsag Channel. Kelsag Channel, mm -hmm. there. And that, dis, uh, that discharge, and everything that we discharge, our, our wastewater plants, we have three that are located on the channel. Mm -hmm. Right, uh, Stickney is located in the Chicago Center Ship Canal. We got the O'Brien plant on the north side, mm -hmm. in the North Shore Channel, and the Calumet plant. Mm -hmm. And they all discharge into the Plains River, 
the Splint River discharged into the Illinois River. Mm -hmm. The Illinois River is discharged into Mississippi down to the Gulf of Mexico. Mm -hmm. So what we do environmentally here in Chicago, they say has effect always going down to the Gulf of Mexico. That's right. Yes. See? So, so, and also uh, uh, we, I think uh, our agency, Catherine, we were the first environmentalists here in the Chicagoland area. What do you think of that? I think <laughs> that's true. I think we are the first environmentalists. The death rate, as soon as the, r the river was reversed, dropped dramatically, and MWR, the Water Reclamation District, built hydropower, which generates six megawatts of electricity. Yes. That's enough electricity for a small village. Yes. So they were environmentalists in the 1900s, yeah. early 1900s. Yeah, very forward thinking. Yeah, yes. for, and remember I said that we, the civil <coughs> engineers, or the engineers, have saved most lives in any other profession. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Cleaning the water. Cleaning the water, because water is very precious. Yeah. Yes. See, and uh, so what do you think of that statement that uh, Katzen said, Brian? Huh? Oh, I agree. I mean, yeah. I th you think of the way Chicago developed at the time, yeah. right? This was a place with a lot of jobs. People yeah. came here, but the infrastructure was behind it yes. a little bit, right? Yes. So it took some time for it to catch up. And modern sanitation has uh, created the city that we have right now. Sure, modern, because anything that we do during the day, mm -hmm. anything, you get up in the morning, Right, you take a shower, you brush your teeth, you, you cook, uh, use water to cook your food, your cereal, uh, you eliminate human waste. Mm -hmm. It all goes into the system and it's, it's a control system mm -hmm. that we, we live in. And uh, wastewater plants are very important. Mm -hmm. yes. Waste, wastewater plants. And, and uh, how many plants do we have, Brian? Uh, we have seven plants. Okay. Um, and they're all around the Chicago area. And we have one located within the city itself with the Calumet plant yeah. on the south side. And the rest of them are in the suburbs. Yes, and, and you know, uh, they were saying that we have the largest plant in the world. Mm -hmm. The yes, largest plant in the world, Stickney, mm -hmm. right? And that does, does, uh, treats up to what, 1.2 billion gallons of, of uh, uh, human waste and every other waste that goes into that system mm -hmm. there. See, and, and you know, uh, very few people know that we are the expert in treating human waste and, and, uh, and how, to, uh, how to treat uh, uh, all the water, all the organic waste that comes into our system. We are the expert. Why is that, Catherine? Why do you think they call us the expert? You know, very few people know that here we're in Chicago, in Cook County, and we are the expert. I think it's the expert throughout the world. Why do you think that, Catherine? I think that we are blessed because we've had very good leadership. Our elected officials, including you, Commissioner Avila, have allowed the development of the Monitoring and Research Department, and they were instrumental in the development of the 503 biosolids regulations yeah. that have been applied worldwide to biosolids. The, the research on what is an acceptable level of different metals and industrial yeah. waste that go into the system that all, most of that research was done in our greenhouse yeah. out at the Stickney plant. Mm -hmm. So, and the Water Reclamation District was the first to build combined sewer overflow tunnels that has been copied throughout yeah. the yeah. country and the world. Mm -hmm. and that, that's been a wonderful example. So MWRD has been a leader since its inception. Oh uh, yeah, and Catherine is right. We have the top scientists. Yes. Mm -hmm. We have the top scientists that are doing research on, and, and they think ahead. They think five years ahead, 10 years. What is going to be five years from now, 10 years? And they're doing these type of research. And, uh, and that's in Stickney. We have a large research um, lab in Stickney. Mm -hmm. How many scientists do we have approximately? Approximately 80 scientists. 80 scientists. Uh, and and, and, and uh, every year, every other year, they have a large conference called WEFTEC. Mm -hmm. Yes. That they come here, and WEFTEC is the largest uh, water and wastewater conference, I think, in the world. Yes. We have about yes. 30,000, 40,000 people come, and they come and see our facilities, how we treat the uh, 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 wastewater. There. Yes. And, 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 and I would encourage anyone out there watching this show to call us up, and we'll be happy to give you a tour mm -hmm. at our wastewater plant to show you. Out of, remember I said out of sight, out of mind, when you flush that toilet, no one ever thinks where it goes, or when you take a shower, or you brush your teeth, or when you cook, everything goes into, or when it rains, it goes into a sewer, in a catch basin, it goes into a sewer. No one ever thinks where it goes, but it goes into our wastewater plant, and it covers all of Cook County. Yes. Mm -hmm. See? 
So, and, and we have a very good system. Now, you mentioned, Brian, we have seven wastewater plants, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Uh, you mentioned uh, Stickney is what, 1.2 billion? Yes. What are the other two pl plants? How large are they? The other large ones? Yes. So with the O'Brien plant, uh, can treat about, I think the design maximum flow is 430. 430, yes. And then the, I'm sorry, 450. Yeah. The Kymet plant is 430. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 So, it's, so you start adding up all these gallons, right? It ends up yes. being over 2 billion gallons. Yeah, over day. 2 billion, and, and that's, that's big, uh, uh, considered big throughout the world. Yes. yes. Yeah, I, I mean, we have, we, we take care of what? How many people do we care here in Cook County, Catherine? The population equivalent of 10.5 million people. 10.5 million people. I mm -hmm. mean, we're living in God's country. Yes, yes we are. Yeah. Because, uh, Catherine, you mentioned that one of our mission is to protect the water supply, mm -hmm. yes. Lake Michigan. Yes. Right? Yeah. And, and we need water because the good Lord made our water about six, our body 62% of water. Mm -hmm. So we need water to live and we have to protect Lake Michigan. And also we have the wastewater plant and also flooding. We, we try yes. and prevent flooding here. Yes. And, and we're doing a good job because we just completed what? Uh, uh, our reservoirs. Yeah, McCook Phase One. Phase uh, One loaded yeah. and are located off of I-55. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, yeah, it's been working wonderfully yeah. with all the rain we've had, especially yeah. this year. Yeah, explain what the reservoirs do, Catherine. Our reservoirs capture the water from the deep tunnel system. We have 900 plus miles of roughly 30 foot diameter tunnels, 300 feet below grade, and they capture what the sewers cannot capture. Yeah. So prior to the construction of these tunnels the sewer overflows went into the river yeah. and we had very few p fish. We had very low dissolved oxygen in the Chicago River. And now with the deep tunnel, we've brought the river back to life. Yeah. There's an awful lot of development and recreation yeah. on our waterways. And we capture the flow in the deep tunnel. The deep tunnels combined capture about 2 billion gallons. And now we have the Thornton Reservoir that captures, that's the end point of the deep tunnel. That's 7.9 billion gallons that's stored and then sent back to the Calumet plant for full treatment. And Stickney right now we have 3.5 billion gallons of storage in the reservoir, the McCook Reservoir. Yeah. So that is the deep tunnels were designed and constructed for water quality and now yeah. the reservoirs are constructed and they serve as flood control well, measures. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. and, and very few people know that those two reservoirs are considered the largest in the world. Yes. Yes. So, See, guys, we have the largest plant in the world, mm -hmm. we have the largest reservoirs in the world, and we have the top scientists mm -hmm. in the world here in Cook County. This is God's country. It is God's yes. country. Yeah, this is God's we have, uh, and, 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 and uh, if anyone wants to tour it, like I said, we'll come and, get, and show you what God's country looked like. <laughs> and may I add <laughs> that if we do get the high school students to come in and take a tour, when I see our staff give a tour, you feel their energy and their, they feel the privilege that they're able to do this work. Yes. There's an awful lot of energy, commitment, and excellence pride. within our yeah. staff pride. Yeah. So that would help encourage children that are considering it to major in engineering and come or science yeah. and come yeah. and work at the Water Reclamation yeah. District. And, and not only that we have good engineers and scientists, we have good tradespeople. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right? Because without the trades to operate the plant, we, we wouldn't be nowhere. No. That's exactly right. Right? right. We have so the world's best trades. Right. Yeah. So, so it's a combination. Mm -hmm. Yes. Of what engineers, scientists, and trade people. Yes. Mm -hmm. to, to run our plant there. Yes. And, and as I mentioned, we have under 2,000 employees. And each one has their own unique job at the district. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. Yeah, at, at the district there. Yeah, and every job is as valuable as the next. So right, every right. job is about it. And Brian, uh, you started out as a young engineer here at the district. Uh, yes. I don't know if it was your second job or third job, right? That was, was my first job. First, oh, yeah, first job. Right. Oh, so right. here, here's Brian. He, uh, he first got out of school as a civil engineer, mm -hmm. first job. And now he worked his way up to be the executive director running the whole operation. Yeah, very, very fortunate. <laughs> yeah. Very fortunate. Yeah, very fortunate, so, yeah. Uh, Brian, did you expect that you were to be the exec director when you first started? Uh, boy, in a word, <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I was just, uh, very lucky. Yeah. Very, so, very Brian, lucky. explain to you when you first started and how you came up, uh, uh, what was it like? So, it was interesting. It was, um, I started uh, working with people a little older than I was, right? So, like we talked about before, when you start working in the world, you 
you know, people, all different ages, yeah. different phases of their life, and different points in their career. So I was fortunate to have a real good crew of people around me, uh, very good mentors along the way, and I was able to just move my way through the district by exams and uh, positions open. I saw a lot of the plants, so I was yeah. very, very lucky. I mean, I couldn't have scripted it, really. It just kind of happened that way. Yeah, and, 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 and Catherine, how about you, Catherine? I started um, working for Eastman Kodak Company. Yeah. And my last job at Eastman Kodak Company, I worked in the motion picture film division. And motion picture film, even today, travels at 90 feet a minute in the camera and in the projector at the theater. Wow. 90 feet a minute. Wow. <laughs> and there's 10 gallons of, of water per foot oh my that God. goes in. And they make hundreds and hundreds of prints. So I went back to school become an environmental engineer because mm -hmm. of the water consumption yeah. at wow. Kodak. Mm -hmm. And my thesis was on removing silver from dilute solution to, for water reuse in industry. So when I started at the district, I was extremely thrilled and I was mostly drawn by the quality of the people. These are the world-class engineers, maintenance and operations, monitoring and research. It's extremely impressive and it's a, a tremendous privilege to be here. And I never would have thought that I would be director of engineering and that's, that's been a wonderful privilege <laughs> yeah. for the mm -hmm. past seven years. Yeah, because you know, at the district, uh, uh, we have engineers, we have male and female. Mm -hmm. And it, it appears the females are taking over. <laughs> 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 because we do have an awful lot of female engineers. Yes. Mm -hmm. that, that, uh, and, and, and they're, um, they just get out of school and their uh, knowledge is, is unbelievable. There. And, 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 and they are, they're, uh, get their license, their PE. Yes. Mm -hmm. License there, uh, because to be a professional engineer in the state of Illinois, you have to take an exam. Mm -hmm. Even though you graduate college as a civil engineer or as a mechanical engineer or electrical engineer or chemical engineer, you have to uh, take an exam at, 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 with the state become a PE. And a lot of our engineers do have their license there. Mm -hmm. there, yes. and, there. And, and, and also, uh, 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 what are some of the accomplishments you think that we accomplish at the district that protects the environment? Uh, Catherine, do you think you can answer that? The thing I'm most thrilled with most recently yeah. is our biological phosphorus removal process at the Stickney plant and the recovery of seven tons of usable fertilizer from the Stickney wastewater plant. I, I find that remarkable. I think it was a wonderful team effort. Engineers... You mean the phosphorus? We're capping the phosphorus? Yes. And, so, and, and why is that so important? And that's important because we are reducing the phosphorus load to the waterway, which can contribute to low dissolved oxygen levels. And, 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 and phosphorus is Good for what? For the it's essential for life. It's a it's a it's a wonderful fertilizer, right. but it's it's a, it's essential for us to intake phosphorus right. as well. Yeah, yeah. And, and and is that a depleted item, phosphorus? It is. the The estimate is that we have about a hundred years worth of phosphorus all over the world. But in I mean, it's in some places sure. that aren't as friendly yeah. to the United States yeah. as yeah. we'd like. So it's rock mined and yeah. transported great distance. Yeah. So the fact that we're producing mm -hmm. a phosphorus rich fertilizer, yeah. seven tons a day yeah. from wastewater is quite remarkable. And, and, and I think it's yeah. the future. Yes, we're recovering that. Phosphorus. Yes. Mm -hmm. See guys out there, what our scientists are, are doing and what they develop, that we could capture that phosphorus. Yes. And it's being <laughs> sold and used in agriculture. Yes, yes, yes. It's wonderful. Yeah. yeah. And, and also we have a, uh, a biosolid program, right, mm -hmm. uh, yes. Brian? Could, could explain about, you know, we, we mentioned that we treat all the human waste and every organic or anything that comes into our system. But after we treat it, what, what do we have after we treat so with any good process, there's also, also a byproduct, right? Yeah, so product, when it settles yeah. out of the wastewater, we uh, can send it to a digestion system, just like your stomach, yeah. where it's heated, yeah. uh, bacteria activates it and breaks down the material inside and produces gas. Yes. And that gas is able to be reused in our plant uh, for process use, so that's a great thing. So we're using energy, and then the material itself is able to be processed, uh, dried, and used as fertilizer. It can yeah. be used on golf courses, it can be used on turf farms, um, it can be used as compost. So yeah, yeah it's, a, it's a kind of a wonderful thing to have happen. That's what you see, what Brian is saying is that 
that at the end of the treatment, we have a product. Mm -hmm. See, that's yeah. the, we have a product. Anything that a manufacturer does, they, they, they produce, they manufacture something, and after that they have a product. But our product, we call it a biosolid. Mm -hmm. See, and, and that biosolid, we give it to the farmers for livestock feed. And, and when they use that, it, the saturation in the soil is longer using our biosolids. Mm -hmm. And it's full of nutrients. Mm -hmm. a lot of nutrients in there and they yield more per acre using our biosolids mm -hmm. yes. See? and we give that away free audience out there if you want some we'll give it to you free mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we'll give you the compost for free also mm -hmm. explain about the compost Brian so compost so we, we've done our scientists have worked uh, to manufacture a, a, almost like a soil substitute so we take wood chips and our biosolids and mix them together. I think it's two thirds wood chips and one third biosolids, yes. roughly. Yeah, two thirds. Yeah. yeah, mix it together, and it produces like a material that is odorless or very minimal odors, and you're able to use around your house. Yeah, exceptional quality. Exceptional yeah. quality. And and also, we'll uh, if anyone out there that wants compost, we'll be uh, we'll send you out ten cubic yards or twenty cubic yards, and if it's a resident, we do it for free. Mm -hmm. We'll we'll uh, and and also. Uh, uh, we're going to get a, a, a machine that's going to bag it, and then we'll have some bags, uh, about 20-pound bags, yes. to, to give to the residents. But we'll give you biosolids, that's our product, mm -hmm. and we'll give you compost, which is the product. So we're producing a product mm -hmm. from your human waste and every other organic waste that comes down into our system and anything that does come in when it rains. Explain, Catherine, when it rains, what happens, everything that comes into a system, how? Most development prior to 1950 was constructed with combined sewers, what we call combined sewers. So the combined sewer, the rainwater and the sanitary flow from your house, your shower and your toilet go into the same pipe in Chicago. It's about, so when it rains, that system becomes full very quickly. In general, these systems are designed for a five year event, five year rain event. When that becomes overflow, overflows, it goes through our deep tunnel system, and now it goes into the reservoir. So we've greatly reduced an awful lot of the flooding. But there are localized flooding areas, and if you do have localized flooding, we encourage you to contact the city or contact your neighborhood, uh, your, your village. Make sure that the local officials know that you have flooding, and we're working very hard on uh, constructing projects and doing master planning and studies to alleviate flooding. Our, we do think that it, it, it'll take 30 years. We did pave over much of the development that was done in the 1950s and 1960s, didn't consider floodplain, didn't consider drainage as responsibly as we would do today, or as we do do today. So. <laughs> I'm going to have to do a nice show to talk about the green. <laughs> <laughs>